Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Know the truth about the tormenting spirit. That's our topic today. We read in 1 Samuel 16:14. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. What does that mean? How could an evil spirit be from the Lord? Why could God allow an evil spirit to torment Saul? What was the purpose of all these? And what Bible is teaching by recording this part in the Bible? Let's learn all these details today. King Saul was the first king of Israel. and after the repeated acts of disobedience the bible says now the spirit of the lord departed from saul and a harmful spirit from the lord tormented him the evil spirit was not a continual presence saul was not possessed but it could often come to him and trouble him in first samuel 16:14 we read the spirit of the lord departed from saul and this is because in the old testament times holy spirit could come upon certain people for certain purpose then could be removed when the season is over but in the new testament holy spirit is dwelling in every born again believer and holy spirit will come upon us first corinthians 3:16 and we are sealed with the holy spirit of promise ephesians 1:13 and 14 So this indwelling Holy Spirit will not depart a true believer. Satan and the evil spirits are not autonomous, and that is, they should ask permission from God to do anything upon the people. That we read in Job one twelve and Job two six and Luke twenty two thirty one. God is a complete ruler over the earth, and He is absolutely sovereign over creation. including evil spirits and god is good that doesn't mean he will overlook our sin that we should understand righteousness is very important for him okay so he doesn't want us to be in our sin and we read in second timothy 2:19 the lord knows those who are his and let everyone who call the name of lord depart from iniquity and we know god is good and that doesn't mean god will not allow sufferings to us okay these are the wrong understanding and the interpretation of the people people will think if god is good why i should suffer why god is allowing this suffering upon us we read an evil spirit from the lord came upon saul one thing we should understand this spirit could not afflict saul without god's permission it seems after some time Saul's mental stability is worsen we are reading in bible okay so nobody is neutral and everybody has varying degrees of satan spirit and god spirit when we empty ourselves ourselves god will be with us but when we are more of sin and in our rebellion satan spirit will be with us we should not forget this truth and god want us to be pure in our hearts we should be pure in our heart to see god matthew 5 8 says and first john 3 3 says everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure and first john 3 8 says whoever makes a practice of sinning is of devil all these scriptures we should understand so what happens to our sin when we sin what will happen as born again believers we should understand we should have a clear idea about these things what bible gives the knowledge about sin and righteousness isn't it bible gives the knowledge about god bible says in second timothy 2:19 lord knows who are his he knows if you want to live in your sin or you want to depart from your sins he knows you are not a surprise for him your heart's intention he knows okay so practicing sin is sinning without the fear of god maximum you may say forgiveness to god but again without the fear of god you will be sinning that is called practicing sin 
Bible is clearly telling in 1st John 3:8 those who are practicing sin are of devils. So we should understand if we are born again baptized are we practicing sin or are we practicing righteousness? If we are not practicing righteousness of course we are practicing sin. Don't forget that. We are practicing righteousness means fearfully we understand our sins and we will make all our efforts to come out from our sins that is and in sending the spirit this tormenting spirit for samuel 16:14 doesn't mean that god is the source of all evil and god neither tempts someone with evil nor does he cause someone to have evil he is not the author of all these evil things happening to us okay and james 1:13 says our sinful desire in us causes us to sin and jesus told us very clearly jesus taught us very clearly in matthew 6:30 pray this prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil hmm? he has taught us to pray lead us not into temptation see we are going like this here is something to fall lead us not to fall there that means we have to keep going isn't it that is the meaning and if we fall in the temptation evil will come and he also taught us in matthew 26:41 he said watch and pray lest you will fall in temptation why all such verses are in the bible why believers are not seeing such verses you should understand what's the meaning of that hmm? so sin is our problem and we excuse our sin we say it's not bad or we argue and justify and say we are not sinning and we laugh at sin and we don't care much about our sin or we say that without sin nobody can live it is natural isn't it we have all sort of arguments to sin but first john 3 4 says sin is practicing lawlessness sin is breaking god's law we should not forget that if we are breaking god's law god has to punish us and god will punish us there is no doubt about that and believers in christ they don't want to hear about god's punishment or god's wrath such things only god's love they love to hear yes god loves us god wants us to walk through righteousness and god wants us to be righteous you may think why always talking about sin bible is only talking about sin see our sin make our heart so rigid so cruel isn't it we don't want to love the people when we have sin in us we cannot love the people we hate the people we want bad things to happen to the people isn't it just think this is bible that's why we have come to christ so we should understand god will punish our sins second thessalonians 1 8 and leviticus 26 18 and romans 2 6 says god will render each one according to his work what we saw we have to reap it we are sinning every day sinning if we are not practicing righteousness we are practicing sin and we have to get the consequences of it and one of the most difficult biblical doctrines to accept is the doctrine of the wrath of god god's wrath gives us whatever sin deserve or whatever rebellion deserve that's all what is god's wrath whatever sin deserves god will give whatever rebellion deserve god will give have no doubt about it don't be angry at the preacher who is preaching such things eh so god's wrath is giving us what our sin and rebellion in us deserve even in our born again life if we live in our earthly nature we receive the wrath of god it's written in colossians 3 5 and 6 and in ephesians 5 6 paul warns us we should not be deceived about god's truth god turn a rebellious soul to an eternal warning it was a warning to all future generations soul torment is a fate we all deserve don't forget can we accept that soul's fate or soul's torment is what we deserve that is the fate we too deserve if we are in continuous disobedience hallelujah it's by grace that we are not haunted and it's our need not to fall in our temptations of our flesh 
and keep us safe from the plans of the enemy enemy has got plans you cannot stop enemy's plans enemy's enemy enemy wants to have only bad things to us that you should not forget if you are not overcoming your temptations if you are not going ahead in righteousness practicing righteousness you cannot defeat the plans of enemy god has a good plan satan has a bad plan okay so god shows his wrath by allowing the spirit agents to do what they want to do did you get me god shows his wrath by allowing the spirit agents to do what they want namely tormenting the people but what those evil spirit do is completely under the sovereign control of god and we must acknowledge along with the repeated testimonies of scriptures that we are in a spiritual battle never forget morning when we get up till we go to sleep we are in spiritual battle where the battle is going on in our mind in our thoughts don't forget we have to educate ourselves with all these that's why we are in christ okay so when bible says that an evil spirit came from the lord it means that god withdrew his protection from soul and when god withdrew his protection from soul the evil spirit were allowed to bring depression on soul and we should understand our depression many people want except depression it is not a clinical depression i am not talking about that everybody has got depression we are sad we are worried we are not content with anything that means we have that depression if god is with us we will be always rejoicing isn't it bible says rejoice always rejoice always why god is telling rejoice always so that he can be with us we think how can we rejoice nothing good is happening we have to trust god everything will turn for our good we need patience go through god's ways that's all we need so when god withdrew his protection from soul the evil spirits were allowed to bring depression on soul we read such an incident in job 27 we read there satan struck job with painful sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head we are reading so clearly satan struck job so any bad thing happens it is satan is doing why satan is doing we are allowing okay all these informations when we were in this world we never knew now we are in christ we should understand we should educate ourselves and live accordingly generally the removal of the god's protective hand occurs for a limited period of time you should read revelation 2:10 you can understand for a limited period of time god will remove his protective hands from everyone that is his testing time he will test us that is for a specific kingdom purpose like he wants to shape us he wants to transform us to strengthen us he wants us to grow in us his characters he wants us to understand our pet and hidden sins we should understand all this truth so in that times many people will go away from god they will not understand what's happening so our spiritual battles and warfare are real even though we cannot see physically the attacker we can educate ourselves on how the battle are fought and how they impact in our lives daily daily the battle impact will be in our life if we are winning you will be happy please understand if you are not winning you will be sad mm know this point every day we have battle we are engaged in battle don't forget if you are fighting and winning you are always happy whatever happens you are happy when you pick the phone ali hello yes sister i am here here hello oh yeah. why you call me na <laughs> eh? because the spiritual sisters call you have just picked the call otherwise you could have just ignored you were in that mental situation 
Please understand, every day we are in battle. If you are winning the battle, you are always strong, you are happy, you are enthusiastic. So we can educate ourselves on how the battles are fought and how they impact in our lives daily. Many believers don't want even to deal with a world and battle which they cannot see. This much we are educating, this much we are preaching, but still believers are forgetting about their battle. If you are not battling, if you are not fighting, Satan will win. Okay, Ephesians 6, 12 and 1 Peter 5, 8, James 4, 7 are some of the verses which reveal about this battle. And there is a spiritual war ongoing for our hearts of man and the forces of evil. And what evil is trying to do is evil spirit want to turn our heart from God. We should not come closer to God. All what I am telling is truth. Satan doesn't want us to come closer to God. We should go away from God. Now we have come. If you are a born again child of God, you have come to Christ. He wants you to reject this God and go back. That is his aim. Unless you fight this battle every day, you cannot win. Many believers say, you don't understand my struggle. As if others are not going through the struggles. My problems are worse than your problem. This is what everybody says. Please understand, everybody has to go through the battles in varying degree. So Bible says that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. First Corinthians 10. 13. So we will think that our problems are too much. When those problems are too much, believers will disappear from the church. But Bible is telling, more than what we can, he will not allow. And with those problems, he has made a way, a way of escape. There is a door. You have to find that door. You have to escape. Exit. Hmm? But believers are not seeing that exit. That's the problem. You have to educate yourself how to come out from that problem. And James 1.13 we read, God will not tempt us, but because of our hidden sins in us, Satan will tempt us. Please understand, these are the truth. That is the reason Jesus Christ taught us in Matthew 6.13. Pray this prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Are you praying this prayer? Without praying this prayer, you don't get any control. You should ask your daily bread, daily spiritual bread. That also many of you have got doubt. Eh? Oh, it is a good humility prayer. Though I have lot of food at home, but still I have to pray that God give me today's bread. Hmm? So that shows my humility. That's what many believers are thinking. No, my dear friend, understand. Daily bread is your spiritual food. I am the bread that came from above to eat me, the word of God. So you should pray this prayer. Then you are practicing righteousness. Daily you should get up and pray, Lord, today's bread I should eat. Give me today's bread. Lead me not into temptation. Fearfully you should pray these prayers. Then you are practicing righteousness. If you are not praying all these prayers, you are not practicing righteousness. Then what you are doing? You are practicing sin. Then you think devil will leave you? Devil will be always with you. Okay? So we should ask God's strength not to fall in the temptations. And this prayer teaches us the importance of asking strength for not to fall. Believers will not understand all this. They are very prayerful people. But these prayers they will not pray. These are the main prayers. Because sin is lawlessness. First John 3, 4 says, eh? If we break the law, sin is lawlessness. It is written. If you break the government law, you will get the penalty. You know that. Or if you are in college or office or anywhere you are, if you are breaking the law of that institution, you will be punished. Isn't it? The same way, Bible says, sin is lawlessness. 
Sin is lawlessness. Let it register into your heart. Sin is lawlessness. Satan knows if we fall in our sin, ah, uh, he can bring something to us. And you will be fearing. One thing you should remember. You will be fearing something that only totally he will bring. Why? Because he knows that you don't want that to happen. Please understand this is the truth. That is the reason. Don't fear about Corona. Don't fear about anything. You should say that, yes, I will have good health. Nothing will happen to me. I will live with a healthy body. You have to tell all these faith words. But if you are fearful about anything, Satan can bring the same sickness into your life. Because he knows you are very scared about that. You think all these are funny things I am preaching. These are the truth. Okay. So temptation is a routine part of our life. Every day we have to go through temptation. Our desire to sin can sometimes feel so much more powerful than our desire to do what is right before God. We want to do righteousness. But we know that something is pulling inside. That is our pride and ego. We don't want to humble down. We want to be where we are. You have to cry a lot and pray, my friends. You are breaking the law. You will be punished. God cannot save you. Hallelujah. So overcoming any given temptation is entirely possible and God is waiting for our cry for help. He is waiting. Psalms. 121, Psalmist is telling, In my distress I cried out to God. He answered me. What is your distress? You think your cancer or your poverty or financial problem or such things? Yes, they are. But more than that, there is a cancerous thing growing in you. Your rebellion, your ego, your pride. Even if you want to humble down before God, that ego is not allowing you to humble down before God. So you should pray, Lord, please break my ego. Please break my pride. Please. In my distress, David is telling, in my distress I cried out to God. He answered me. Do you go to God with this prayer? He will answer. He is waiting on us. But believers will not go. Believers will go with the problems of this world. Please understand this truth. Hallelujah. The experience of human temptation is part of what makes Christ's relationship to us. Did you get me? The experience of temptation, human temptation, is part of what makes Christ's relationship to us. We need Christ. For not to fall in the temptation. That's the reason Jesus Christ told in John 15 chapter. Without me you cannot do anything. People will read and say, oh Jesus is writing. Without me you cannot do anything. <laughs> All these days as if with Jesus I have done. Hmm? I made so much of property. I have so much of education. I have done so many things. What a funny verse this is. They may think, without me you cannot do anything. That means you cannot love a person or loving an enemy. Can you love? Forgiving people whom you cannot forgive. Can you do that? To control your short temper, you are very short tempered. You want, you are trying, you are trying. Many people will try through the worldly ways. But that is not lasting. For some time you can do. I have seen many people whom I was preaching. They were challenging me. Let me see whether I can become righteous without Jesus Christ. They are all failed. They cannot. Because we as believers, we need daily prayer. Lord, help me not to fall in my temptations. God is waiting, my friends. This is our relationship. That's why we need Jesus in our life. It's written in Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. We read, We don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one 
who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. We need mercy and grace. We need mercy. Why? We are falling. We are falling. Every day we are falling. You should tell God, please, give me strength, grace. The strength. Strength from God. So, you should go to the throne room of grace for mercy. Hallelujah. So, besides our daily prayers, there are seasons we have to cry out to God for His mercy. Are you crying out to God for His mercy? Every day you may not feel like. Because some days are really cool. But some days are really severe. Very severe. This comes to everyone. It's not just for you and me, for everyone. Those days you can understand where all you are falling. Though you never wanted to fall, or you thought that you are better, those days you can understand you are nowhere. Isn't it? Then when you understand that you are nowhere, you have to cry out to God and pray, Lord, give me strength. I don't want to repeat this. You should go to the throne of grace for mercy and for grace. So that's the reason I told you we have to cry out to God for His mercy that is in times of severe temptations in our adversity, in our fiery days, not to fall in our fleshly nature of pride, disappointment, anxiety, panic feeling, ego, all grumbling, murmuring. When you start the fire only, you should recognize, oh, this is going to be something else. Lord, help me. When a fire breaks out or anything starts, you can see, isn't it? Beginning you can see in the same way, when that adversity happens in your mind, you should catch there. Oh, this should not become something else. Did you get me? It may be in your heart, you are going to think so much of negativity or bad things. Then you should know, no, no, I should not think like this. Let me stop it. The beginning point only you should stop. Or there is a fight in your house, the fight started. Your husband or child or whoever, they started. Then you should know, no, now it started, I should control. I should not burst out. This is how we have to be careful. This is how we have to live our spiritual life. So God is waiting upon us. Jesus is waiting upon us that we will come before Him for His mercy. He will give us strength to overcome all our fleshly weaknesses. Our fiery days are the days we should get closer to God. Please understand, many believers will go away from God on their fiery days. No, fiery days are the days you should come closer to God. Otherwise you will sin, 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 sin and you will go away from God. Understand one point today. When the fire starts, either in your heart or in your office or anywhere, catch hold of it. Stop it before it becomes something else. You should start praying, God, I should not lose my temper. Something is going to happen. Nothing good is happening. You know that. Nothing good is happening. I am getting irritated. I am getting angry. No, no, no. I should not. God, help me. Help me. This is how you should pray. It was raining. It started raining at 4 o'clock. Our meeting will start at 5 o'clock. I was remembering today's message. No. Rain will be stopped. Everybody will come in time. Happened, isn't it? Otherwise, we will be panic. Are you? Now only it started. Nowadays, if the rain starts, it will not stop only. My God, whether I can go or what? Don't think like that. Immediately you should catch, no, God will stop. God will help me. Be cool at that time. See, fire starts for everyone. This is the way you have to deal with your fire. You should cry out to God. If you are not able to control, if you are able to control, that means those who are practicing, they get little strength. If you are not practicing, you should cry out to God. No, 
Lord, I should believe you. I should believe you. I'm not able to believe. Help me. This is how you have to pray. So our fiery days are the days we should get closer to God. Those days are the days we have to have more strong relationship with God. Otherwise, we will sin and we will go away from God. He is waiting on us. He wants us to pray and depend upon Him. Please understand when you are going through that fiery days, God is looking into your heart and situations. If you depend upon Him only, He can help you. But you will forget everything. That time you are filled with the satanic anointing, ready to fight. God will be there, He will be watching. She's not calling me. I'm not able to help. They are going to fight. What will happen to us, he knows, but we don't know. This is what happens, my friends. Understand. So he is waiting on us. He wants us to pray and depend upon him for his help. He is ready to help us. Those days, if you don't get closer to God, we will go away from God. That is what is happening to many believers. Please understand. Educate the people with this understanding. If you are practicing, you can educate others. But if you are not practicing, you will think better they are not coming to church, no? <laughs> I am only going because of others' force. You may be thinking. You should think. You should decide that, yes, I have to go and help such people. Eh? So we might think our fleshly characters are so strong, we cannot overcome them. And Satan might encourage you that your characters are very strong. Eh? You should not think like that, no. I can more than what we can, he will not allow the temptations. I can, I can. God will help me. God will help me. I am hmm? in God. He will help me. God wants me to be righteous. He only created me like this. I am not a surprise for him. And I should be like him. First John 3.3 3 says, Those who have got hope in him, purify themselves. Okay? Don't think that Holy Spirit will do something and make you holy. You have to purify yourself with the help of Holy Spirit and with the help of the Word of God. Purify themselves like Jesus is pure. So God wants me to be pure. God wants me to be holy. Then God will make me. He will give me strength. But you should pray a lot. You like prayers. In your distress you are not praying. When is your distress you have no self-control. You just think whatever you want or you will flow in your fleshly characters. Those are the days you should kneel down and pray. Please, I bless you all today to have this kind of prayer life. You should cry out to God and pray, Lord, help me to have self-control. I am not able to. Today also I failed in the war. I have failed today also. Help me, I don't want. Understand, this is called practicing righteousness. In our problem, we should find God's way of escape. First Corinthians 10.13 says, More than what we can, God will not allow temptations. And with the temptation, there is a way out. I am going to tell you about this way out. Listen to me very carefully. You should find that way out and escape from your fiery days. Then you will have peace. Your problem will be solving little by little. So we should not forget what is written in 1 Corinthians 10.13 and we should find God's way of escape in every problem. In every problem, God's way of escape. What is God's way of escape? First is giving thanks for everything. First learn to give thanks in your problem. First when you give thanks, all the other spirit will go away. God's spirit will come. Then faith will come. We will be cool, we will be calm. But if you start grumbling and murmuring and being panicked, Satan's spirit will come with you. So, way out. I am talking about way out. Bible is telling, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, more than what we can, he will not allow temptations. And with the temptations, there is a way out. The way out, first is giving thanks. Yes, problem. Problem. You have never expected you have expected something else, but opposite happened. How to face the situation? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this problem. What happens? You feel happy, 
your anger will go away your irritation will go away you came to hit someone you have become calm that is god's spirit in that fiery days you know that what all temptations you are into control them you are getting angry you are becoming mad you are disappointed you are worried panic you feel like running away control you should control yourself you should not flow in your flesh such a way of escape makes it possible for us to avoid having to suffer defeat from those temptations if you are finding that way and going out you will not be defeated because of that temptation a problem has happened if you fail in that battle things will go bad to worst but if you are going out from the way that god shows you will not be defeated in the battle hallelujah so such a way of escape makes it possible for us to avoid having to suffer defeat in the time of temptation such a way of escape will help us to reduce the heat in each time otherwise heat will be too much heat will be too much you will think what to do where can i go you will be panic but if you start worshiping god and if you are controlling your sins you may think oh pastor you can tell like that i am not able to cry out to god for his mercy hebrews 4:15 and 16 you may not get that self control you may be thinking that yes, it is easy to preach yes i know that but difficult to obey we should pray in our cool days oh we are there out eh, no problem nothing little for the sake of prayer we will pray hmm? then no problem when problem comes we are in one corner putting the blanket and sitting every day if you pray you get strength because when you are going to get a heated day you don't know when you are going to fall into temptations you don't know so if you know that and pray it is well and good prayer is very weak for the children of god we are fed up of praying we are not able to pray that's the reason so such a way of escape will help us to reduce the heat in our each fire such a way of escape will give us peace and satisfaction at all times however to go through the way of escape we have to choose to suffer in the flesh we have to carry the cross of jesus christ and follow we have to become like jesus christ that's why you are in christ that's why you are coming to church isn't it that's why today you are in this meeting otherwise you don't need this meeting you can be out with your worldly friends why you are here hmm? don't come with anybody's force you should come by yourself never come by anybody's force i don't want any such people to sit in our church you should come each time when you come you should know that god will speak to me i want to hear something from god This is God's meeting. This is not my meeting. I'm his agent. That's all. Isn't it? I have not called you people here for my meeting. I have called for God's meeting. So when you come for God's meeting, you should expect something. God speak to me. God will speak. Cuz you are in the battle whether you believe it or not. Whether you ignore or what. You are in the battle and you're failing. See how a successful person will be always happy isn't it do you have happiness are you enjoying this life if you are not enjoying this life you are getting defeated satan is defeating you hallelujah so by nature we could avoid having to suffer in the flesh by nature we don't want to humble down from our fleshly nature we don't want to change from our characters we don't want to change from who we are our pride and ego will not allow us to humble down at such time we hope that god would do something and give an easy solution and bring us out that's what many people will pray god will not do that you have to change you will be praying that oh let this problem be over but you don't want to change that will not happen you have to change hallelujah but that is not 
what is written in the Bible. You want an easy escape. You want the problems to be over so fast without you doing anything. You have to do something for your problem. Hallelujah. If we receive the strength from God and control our flesh to forsake the sins, we find in our troubles peace and joy. Let me come to the point. Otherwise, this tormenting spirit, what we have seen in First Samuel 16, 14, will be always with you. Tormenting spirit. Torturing spirit. Do you have peace or pain today? You will not tell you that I am all fine. No. Hmm? So the tormenting spirit will not torment you further if you find the way out. Otherwise, the tormenting spirit will be always with you and tormenting spirit will be tormenting you. Pain will not reduce. You will be in question mark. Something you will do to come out from that pain. Again, you are in pain. See, you are like a worldly person. The worldly people are how? They are in their pain. They will switch on their TV or their mobile to have some entertainment to come out from their pain, isn't it? Are you a person like that? That means tormenting spirit is with you. That's the reason. We should not switch on the TV to get some relief. What is our relief? Go to the throne room of grace. Worship God. Pray to God. You will be released. This peace you don't get from anywhere. So if we receive the strength from God and control our flesh to forsake the sins, we find in our troubles, peace and joy, the tormenting spirit will not torment us further. If you don't choose to go through God's way of escape, you choose to entertain your negative thoughts about the situation, negative thoughts about the people that you are suffering, who caused the situation, you will think bad about them. You will have so much of unforgiveness about them. You will have so much of anger about them. All negativity, negativity, negativity. Satan is so happy. Hmm? Torment will increase. Pain will increase. Understand my friends. So if you are in your own sense, if you cannot come out, that will cause you to walk around the enemies. Pain will increase and this pain is from the tormenting spirit. We have only two spirits in this world, God's spirit and Satan's spirit. Please understand, God's spirit and Satan's spirit. If God's spirit is with you, you are always happy, you are peaceful, you are a loving person. You don't have that anger, revenge and all in your heart. Eh? That doesn't mean that you are like Jesus Christ. Eh? You are growing. You are a growing person. You are born again, baptized. How many years are over now? You are a baby. When you went into the baptism tank and came out, you were a baby. How many years by now? Babies have to grow, isn't it? That baby is growing means God will be with that baby. Baby will be maturing, growing. Baby is growing, baby will help many people. Baby is with the tormenting spirit, he is for himself. Huh? God is using you? You are being useful to many people? When this tormenting spirit is with you, whom you can help, where you can go and tell the gospel, whom you can bring to church? Tormenting spirit will not allow. When God's spirit is there, you will go like a mad person. When the spirit of the Lord is within my heart, huh? I will pray like Jesus prayed. I will love like Jesus loved. I will dance like David danced. I will sing like David sang. Isn't it? Not sometime, always. That is not some momentary experience. Always. Everywhere we are. Everywhere we are. We have to practice. So understand. Only two spirits are there in this world. Mahajanare Arthamadikole. God spirit and double spirit. God spirit is with you. Always you are happy. Not when you are happy, you are happy. 
always you are happy in the problem. When you find that some problems are not being able to solve, you know that that will be solved. I'm not telling that, my friends, you will develop into such a character or a nature or a personality within a day. But you should grow. It's a painful situation, we know that. The sufferings are sufferings, painful. But no, God has a way out for you. Find it out. Keep going out from each problem. Don't be inside. If you don't find that way and go out, you will see this door is closed and you are inside the fire. You will be burning, burning with the fire. Otherwise, you will be cleansing and you are going out. Hallelujah. The truth is that our enemies dwell in our own flesh and this is nothing to do with others' behavior and circumstances. A scapegoat, an excuse appears so that flesh itself doesn't want to suffer. Therefore, we will cry out from inside. We will tell others our problem. I am innocent. God help me. Nobody is seeing me. Why? Our flesh doesn't want to humble down. You can hear that cry. Others are the problem. I am innocent. Poor me. Poor me. How much I am suffering. Hallelujah. But if we cry out to God in our distress and in our fiery and troublesome times, God will give us strength not to be negative, not to be unthankful or fearful and be rebellious inside. Please increase your prayers. Increase your prayers. Hallelujah. Remember God has made a way of escape. Find it. The way of escape is controlling our flesh and flowing in the spirit. If you are in the flesh, you are inside the trouble. If you are ready to walk in the spirit in that trouble, you will go out from the door. This is the way out for all our unrighteousness, impurities of our heart, unrest and unhappiness. So, dear friends, understand, after knowing the truth of God, if you are not ready to escape from your heated temptations, through God's way, during your troubled time, the pain from the tormenting spirit will be too much, too much, too much, too much. This pain is from where? You are alright, your body is alright. It is not from any surgery or operation doctor is doing. But Satan is doing some operation in your heart. When Satan is doing that operation, you will get pain, my friends. Allow God to do the operation. God is ready. It is not that God is not ready. You should accept God's operation. When you control, when you control, this pain will go. Otherwise, this pain will be too much into your heart. You won't be able to bear it. They will torment you and keep tormenting you. Today, you need to recognize this tormenting spirit. And if you understand today that tormenting spirit is with you, don't say that, no, 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 I'm happy, no. You may say today you are happy, today was okay, this day might have been okay for you. Nothing bad has happened, that's the reason. But in your troubled, painful time, can you say, I'm okay? No problem. Can you go out and do evangelism? Can you strengthen each other? Bible is telling, encourage each other. You have to do a ministry. If you are with tormenting spirit, the people who are with tormenting spirit, they cannot do ministry because they are tormented. They are painful. What they can do? What you have, you can give. Wherever you go, you can give what you have. With your pain, what you can give others? Nobody wants your pain. They will tell, go away. Ayo, we don't want your relationship. But you are happy. You are always giggling. You are peaceful. People want your presence. Chumma, I am telling something. This is gospel. 
understand so today if you know that this tormenting spirit is with you and always with you understand you are going in your own ways if you are going in your own ways this spirit will never leave you and god will not call illi bare nam maga yake avan chode hogta idiya god will not tell amma artha maadi koli ah no that day he has baptized is my child see he is going to such and such international church he is going he has got a membership there don't go with him god won't tell he is seeing that spiritual soul from such and such church is going with satan you know that he will be crying there but you are happy because you are arrogant you are rebellious you don't want to come out from your sins anything he can do please understand me this is gospel god came to save you from lawlessness understand lawlessness sin is lawlessness you should know what is law of god he has got only two laws love your god with all your might strength and power love your neighbor as yourself that's all two laws nothing else can you do this if you say you cannot do this tormenting spirit is your possession he is always with you anywhere you go he is with you he is walking with you he is dancing with you whatever you do eh when you are playing pubg now pubg is not there many of you are playing he is with you he is very happy ga oh, adu 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 <laughs> then your mother or somebody is telling take bible eh who will read bible worship who will do hmm? don't do okay satan is very happy understand be wise be wise god came to save you from this enemy you should understand how to get out from this enemy's grip the story of saul is one of the sorest and the most disgraceful in the bible and we need to take his story as a warning and it reveals what disobedience towards god and unchecked hidden sins can do in an individual's life our church is a lucky church eh we will show you the hidden sins in you but people will fight with us i stood for this church you know hmm? i will show the guidance oh you see no i am holy this sin is not there they are chumma bringing something and showing please don't fight with the guidance i am telling you hidden sins you should be pure like jesus christ is pure means in our understanding we are pure but we are not Christ way is a beautiful church i love this church really because it is not my church those who love christ way god loves you there is a vision somebody has seen those who love christ way god will love and those who bless the leader who is leading christ way god will bless you hmm? christ way is not mine please understand everything in detail you should sit and see you may say that that sin is not there if that sin is not there you should ask god god reveal to me hidden sins presumptuous sins all should go away that place is heaven heaven is not a cheap place that every born again believer can go just by baptism all can go with this dirty heart huh? they cannot love people and they are thinking they can go should understand so this story of soul reveals what disobedience towards god and unchecked hidden sins can do in an individual's life the torment and the torture from the torturing spirit is a reality your ignorance or your unbelief will not help you from escaping the spirit so humble down eh? i was just thinking why can't we have unity in the church we are all together striving for one goal isn't it why to judge each other why to comment at each other why to have jealousy let us stand together everybody has got pain how sympathy and mercy for each other 
that is called church that is god's church understand caring each other loving each other helping each other no jealousy no criticism anything you want to criticize you go and tell sister or brother what you are doing is wrong that is how you are making peace with that person don't sit and criticize behind a person especially about pastor i will always think why these people are like this why can't we have unity why can't we stand together and work towards one goal this is church please cooperate to grow god needs your cooperation please understand i have cooperated with god but my cooperation alone will not be enough god needs each one of your cooperation with that cooperation only christ way will keep going please understand we all have problems we all have painful situations god is telling there is a way out don't be rebellious to find this way out so the torment and the torture from the tormenting spirit is real the misery of king soul was the act of discipline to correct his behavior and get him to stop being disobedient god disciplines everyone bible is telling revelation 3:19 god disciplines whom he loves if you know god loves you god will discipline you hmm? don't forget recognize your sins and work hard to forsake them we really need to understand the true cost of sin you have to pay a big price humble down today before we take the holy communion humble down tell god thank you for christ way i will lift this christ way i want many to be blessed through christ way you should pray hallelujah so we really need to understand the true cost of sin may god help you to understand your fiery days of temptation and the way to escape and powerful strength you will get it to choose to go out from the way of escape and let me conclude this message by reminding you once again god has made this way of escape this is the way out of all unrighteousness of our flesh unrest and happiness so if you are going out you are going out from your fleshly nature did you get me that's my point concluding point i told you hmm? if you are going out from this way you are going out from your fleshly nature but if you are not ready to go out from the way that i have explained you are inside to increase your fleshly nature then you think that's okay but tormenting spirit mr tormenting spirit will never leave you my friend all this pain all this pain you may be educated you may be working eh you may achieve many things through your smartness but the tormenting spirit will never leave you please understand bless this each and every one who make use of the way of escape let's close our eyes in prayer